Hello and good evening students and welcome to today's daily quiz presented to you by Baidu's Exam Prep IES. Now before we start the quiz here is a very important announcement that we'll be having a free live interactive workshop on how to ace the IES exam while preparing at home for UPSC CSE 2024 aspirants. So this will be held on 31st May live 7 p.m. onwards. So do not forget to mark your calendars and attend this workshop. The link for registration is available in the video description. Let us now take a look at the first question. How many of the following statements are correct? Goa became a full state of India in 1961. It was a part of Bijapur kingdom before being captured by the Portuguese. Operation Vijay was launched in 1961 to expel the Portuguese from both Goa and Daman and Diu. We have taken this question because on 30th May, Goa celebrates its statehood day. Now, Goa was integrated into India in the year 1961 after Operation Vijay. Now, Operation Vijay, yes, it was both for Goa as well as Daman and Diu. So, these entities, they were first made the Union Territories and eventually in the year 1987 on 30th May, Goa achieved its full statehood. Now, before coming under the control of Portuguese, Goa was a part of the Adil Shahi dynasty's Bijapur kingdom. It was conquered in the year 1510 by the Portuguese governor Afonso de Albuquerque. So, if we go back to the question, this is incorrect. It got the full statehood in 1987. This is correct and this is correct. So, your correct answer is B. The next question is, how many of the following water bodies border Turkey? Aegean Sea, Caspian Sea, Bosphorus Strait, Mediterranean Sea and Red Sea. We have taken this question because recently Turkey held its presidential election where the president Recep Tayyip Erdogan, he won a fifth term as the president of Turkey. Now, in the past few years, Turkey has been very much in news because of its open stance of supporting Pakistan against India. However, recently, Turkey has started to woo India as well in order to promote its tourism industry. Now, Turkey, it is located both in the continents of Asia as well as Europe. So, Turkey has many water bodies surrounding it. We have the Black Sea to its north, then we have the Bosphorus Strait, the Sea of Marmara and the Aegean Sea. We also have the Dardanelles Strait, then the Mediterranean Sea to its south. So, if we go back to the question, this is correct, this is incorrect, this is correct, correct and incorrect. So, your correct answer is B. Next, we have which of the following statements are true? Flavanols are a type of nutrients found in some fruits and vegetables. They have antioxidant properties. Their deficiency in human body. It is associated with old age related memory loss. Now, flavanols, they are a subgroup of flavonoids. And recent study regarding flavanols, they have stated that their deficiency in the body, it is very much associated with the old age related memory loss in humans. So, flavanols, where are they usually found? They are found in certain vegetables as well as fruits like grapes, kale, blueberries, strawberries, peaches, broccoli, tomatoes and so on. Now, flavanols, they also have very good antioxidant properties. That means they can help the body fight off potentially harmful free radicals or molecules which can be introduced. So, if we go back to the question, this is correct, this is correct and this is also correct. So, your correct answer is C. The next question is polygenic risk score is a score given to the countries based on the susceptibility of its citizens to get cardiovascular diseases an index to determine a region's vulnerability towards endogenic disasters, an index to calculate whether or not an asteroid will strike the earth, a genetic test to determine a person's susceptibility to get heart diseases. Now, polygenic risk score, it is a type of genetic test which can be used to identify people most likely to have heart attacks long before they have them. 
However, these types of tests, they have raised various questions that whether we should start such kind of treatments related to heart ailments in people who have not yet gotten those ailments, who might get them in future or might not get them in future. Also, it might divert the resources from the people who require these treatments to the people who do not necessarily need it. So, if we come back to the question, the D option is our correct answer. Now we come to a PYQ. Under which schedule of the Constitution of India can the transfer of tribal land to private parties for mining can be declared null and void? Third schedule, fifth schedule, ninth schedule and twelfth schedule. Now, when we talk about tribal areas, the Indian constitution, it provides autonomy to these areas in the field of governance under both the fifth as well as the sixth schedule. So, sixth schedule is not mentioned. So, definitely B should be the correct answer, right? So, fifth schedule, it entails provisions related to administration and control of scheduled areas and scheduled tribes. Whereas, sixth schedule, it entails provisions relating to administration of tribal areas in ta me me in these specific states, Tripura, Assam, Meghalaya as well as Mizoram. According to a case judgment by Supreme Court in Samantha versus State of Andhra Pradesh 1997, the court declared, the Supreme Court declared that transfer of tribal lands to private parties for mining is null and void under the fifth schedule. So this is our correct answer. Can you in the comment state, what do these three schedules give information regarding in the Constitution of India? Now we come to the fact of the day which is about EIACP, Environmental Information Awareness, Capacity Building and Livelihood Program. Now EACAP was earlier known as ENVIS. That is Environmental Information System. It was renamed recently to EICAP and it is now one of the central sector sub schemes which is being implemented in the country in alignment to the mission life. So, what was ENVIS, which has now become EICAP? It came into existence in 1983 as a planned program. It was eventually subsumed within the revamped scheme of Environment, Education, Awareness, Research and Skill Development. It serves as a one-stop platform for dissemination of environmental information on informed policy formation on various facets of environment as well as on facilitation of alternate livelihoods through green skilling. As a part of the current mass mobilization program with regards to mission life, 60 EICAP centers, they are actively engaged in promoting awareness about sustainable actions that individuals can undertake to bring about changes within their lifestyles to contribute towards environmental conservation. So that is all about today's daily quiz. I hope you were able to understand all the concepts. So do not forget to like the video, share it and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more such content. Thank you very much and have a very good day ahead.